don't know why But I know all about you I've come to talk to you tonight About the things I've seen I've come to shine the light on Let me introduce myself I am a poor All right. Good morning, folks. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to another segment of the morning edition of The Cool Hard Truth. I um, hope you guys are well. It is Thursday, March the 19th. This time is moving a little slow. I wouldn't say it's moving super fast. Um, those of us who are working from home, you guys know what I'm talking about. You've got kids at home. There are some, I think, unique challenges um, to that whole situation, which we're hoping to be able to provide some information um, for you guys in the coming days of just how to handle um, the challenges of, you know, making sure your kids kind of remain organized with schoolwork and they're staying focused so that, you know, over the next potentially what could be a couple months, they don't lose their entire um skill set of <clears throat> whatever they've been learning in schools. So um, we hope to be able to have um, an educational expert join us in the program who can tell you precisely, you know, what you should be doing as a parent to ensure that your children continue on that path. And I know some of your kids are in their last years of school and they were trying to get ready for exams and that sort of stuff. So we're going to talk about all of those things. Um, Wizbite says, well, for those parents who said that they could do a better job than their, than their children's teachers, um, bow, now is your chance to shine. <laughs> a little tongue-in-cheek uh, comment there this morning. Um, but you know what, Wiz? I think that a lot of parents, including myself, will definitely appreciate your educators um, that much more when you uh, send your kids back to school because you do appreciate what they do. Um, it, it's, it's a thankless job. Um, what can I say? You know, teachers, I guess, are kind of used to it by now, but we should definitely be more grateful for uh, the wonderful job um, that they do because at the end of the day, you know, it, it really is an amazing job in my opinion. And I think that um, we should just be more appreciative and that's the point. Yeah, we can't do a better job than them. They are the professionals and um, it is what it is. So good morning to Joy, good morning to Daisy, good morning, Olive. Um, let me do a shout out. IG people, can you send your proper name so I can Let's do shout shout outs to you guys as well. I did see Mousy um, tuned in this morning. Mousy from the UK. Thank you, Mousy, for joining us. And by the way, guys, I have a video that I'm going to put up later about some looting and stuff that's happening in the UK. I just need to do a little bit more research and exactly where and when that was because I don't want to put up something. It was just shared with me, but um, I don't want to put up something. Um, yeah, I do want to put up something about um, about that a little bit later on. I'm just trying to fact check. So, Trisha, good morning. Jorge, good morning. Um, let's see who else is here. Chad, good morning to you and IG. Um, Ashanti, I think that is. Good morning. So, um, Car Shelley, good morning. Um, Connor, morning, morning, morning. Okay, so listen, we got a lot of grounds to cover. 
a lot of people um, asking questions that I'm hoping that we can get through. Yvette, good morning to you as well. She says, morning, Sandra, loving your great work that you're doing. Uh, Melita Ebanks is tuned in. Good morning, Melita. Um, Robbie, good morning to you. So yeah, so listen, couple questions. So yesterday, let's kind of recap what happened yesterday. Um, the government had another um, briefing. So every day around two o'clock, they had it at three o'clock. Um, we can ex expect a press briefing from them. I think this is a wonderful idea. I wanna take my hats off to Alden McLaughlin and his cabinet members for um, doing this. Yesterday, Mr. Joey Hugh joined them for the first time. Um, and, you know, I, uh, you guys know that sometimes I'm critical of the job that our government does. But um, I think in relation to handling right now, I do think initially their response was a little slow, but they have picked up the ball. And I do think that they are doing the best that they can in the circumstances to try to contain this situation. And um, I want to, you know, publicly say that because I don't want people to think that I only ever have negative things to say when people are doing the job that they should be doing and they're doing a good job at it then we want to make sure that we give them the credit that they deserve and we highlight that. And we're hoping um, you know, to be able to contain this situation as much as possible. Yesterday, Jamaica had their first death. So this is a very real situation. And you know, I think shutting down the airports is something that should have already been done, but hey, here we are, let's just do it and get it done with. Um, Sometimes we kind of tongue in cheek um, laugh at some of the cabinet members because it seems like they're not the best at reading their prepared speeches. Um, but, you know, we'll talk about that at another time because that speaks to who we elect in public office. And when you elect someone in public office, there are a lot of different things that you should be looking for when you consider them for elected office. And certainly one of those things um, should definitely be their ability to communicate with the public. There's just one criteria. And also their ability to deal with um, stressful situations like crises that come up. So, you know, a lot of candidates run for public office and they're like, hey, you know, you don't have to have any real qualifications. I'm just a good person. I work hard within my community, blah, blah, blah. And um, that's no longer good enough. You know, we live in the 21st century that's moving very, very quickly. And at the end of the day, we have to think about these things like what if a corona, something we didn't even expect, what if the coronavirus breaks out? You know, um, the people that we elect are gonna be making those decisions that impact our lives. And we need to make sure that they're qualified people. So like I said, I don't wanna go too much into that right now but we will get there um, before the next general election for sure to talk about um, you know, how this whole situation has been handled. And you know, I've received information um, from a number of people and there's this story that I am chasing about the whole patient ground zero, which we have been encouraged by certain people to kind of like forget that situation, let's just move on and deal with the here and now. And I agree with that, but there are some real questions that need to be answered about how this patient was even handled and how this patient was accepted into our country in the first place. You know, we're told, okay, it was just business as usual. He was like any other patient and there weren't any red flags. Well, there should have been red flags. And um, again, that's something that I think when we review what has happened here, when we get out of the dust of the immediate situation, uh, we need to look at that. And I do have evidence from um, government officials that there were some concerns even in terms of how the EMT staff, um, you know, were exposed and the people that dealt with him at that level. So there's some there's some real questions to be answered for sure. All right. Good morning, Carrie Ann. Good morning, uh, Renika. Good morning, Topaz, Zita. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, we have um, Garrick. Good morning to you. Rosa is tuned in. Charlene, of course, is with us. Thank you so much. Good morning to all of you. Olive says, um, if it's a video that I just saw, it's an old video. If you're going to put it up, just look at some of the comments on it. Okay, I received it on um, WhatsApp, so there are no comments. 
So I'm not sure, uh, but I am going to definitely check it out before I put it up because you guys know what happens during situations like this. It's like we have an earthquake and people start circulating old earthquake videos or old hurricane videos. And they're like, oh, this is what's going on right now. And it's not the case. Like someone sent me a video yesterday, which I had momentarily put up and then I took down because my sources said to me, actually, um, that isn't Jamaica. It's like Guyana or Grenada or somewhere else. And they had like people lined up at the airport um, saying that they were just waiting to get out of the country. So I know that person was just passing on something else that someone gave them. But, you know, we all need to kind of try to vet the information that we're receiving as much as possible. And uh, this is where I really should have put on my thinking head and asked my Jamaican husband, does this look like Jamaica to you? And he probably could have told me no. <laughs> so we all have a role to do in sort of um, <clears throat> responsibility when it comes to putting out the the um, the fake information, let's try to keep that to a minimum and just not engage in that type of um, behavior. So, you know, the government keeps going on and on about fake news. I think that their approach of how they do it is kind of a bit interesting. We live in, a, in an environment where everybody wants news and we all want it instantaneous. So the second that we get information, and this is kind of human nature as well, except, you know, years ago, the way we used to communicate and the way we used to share information was different. It took longer for information to spread around the world. Now, because of the, the access that we have, you know, everyone is in contact with everyone. Like literally I send out a WhatsApp message. It goes to hundreds of people and then somebody else sends it out to their contacts. That's another two, 300 people. So something can literally go viral now in half a day. Whereas previously, maybe it took a couple of days to really grow some legs. That's no longer the case. And of course, you know, it's very, very difficult once you put it out there to take it back. Uh, so just kind of all, let's be mindful when we're circulating stuff that we're relatively sure of the source of the authenticity. A lot of times you're able to um, do a couple checks just to make sure that what you're sending out is actually accurate. And right now there's all sorts of stories in circulation about do we have a potential vaccine for this virus? Um, you know, every Tom, Dick and Harry has an opinion about the coronavirus and they're all uh, sticking it up on social media. And those people are not experts just because someone gets up and says, oh, I've had the coronavirus and this is what happened to me and blah, blah, blah. That does not um, mean that they are an expert in anything. And it doesn't mean that you should give their opinion any more weight than somebody else's opinion. It's just an opinion. So, um, you know, I think we're all anxious to hopefully get a cure, um, not a cure, but a vaccine for this virus. And so we're willing to listen to everything. We're willing to listen to, you know, what people are saying um, about the options that Cuba is deploying. You know, there's been this whole thing circulating um, about, um, you know, what's happening in China. And everybody's like, oh, China has the cure. Well, listen, personally, I'm not going to believe a whole lot of anything that China has right now. Being the ground zero of this whole thing with China, they might be the last ones that I want to get a vaccine from, to be honest. So I'm going to wait until Trump and his boys tested on their people first, and then I'll be open to maybe considering it once none of those persons fall dead. Um, this is just my opinion. This is just like how I feel about the situation. You know what I'm saying? So Donovan, good morning. Donovan's uh, joining us from New York. Um, Brow, Brow Lash. 789 says, morning, Sandy. Good morning to you as well. Um, let's see who else. Lucid.ky. Rose Bodden says, hi. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've got 360, big up to 360K man for um, tuning in. We appreciate you um, joining us this morning as well. So, um, yeah, so there's definitely a lot of information that has been in circulation. You know, when it comes to news, you got to know what sources to make sure that you try to verify stuff with. And, um, of course, one of the interesting things that is happening right now is um, the, sorry, I was just making mention of how news travels in this day and age. 
And one of the interesting things, and this is why, listen, this is why CMR has taken off, right? Because we live literally in a society in a world where people don't want to wait two or three days to see something in print media. If something is happening right now in East End, there's a crime being committed, somebody's being robbed or whatever, I bet you anything within five minutes, 10 minutes, depending on, on how it goes down, I am going to get a message that's going to say, hey, this is what's going on. I may not have all of the details of the who, the what, the when, the where, the how, but I might know something is happening. As a matter of fact, before the police even get there, I tend to know what's going on. Uh, messages like, oh, police are in route, ambulance is in route, something is happening in the Eastern Districts. That's how we want our information and that's how we now communicate in this day and age. So it's quite ironic that CMR kind of filled this um, void in media that people wanted. They wanted the information a little bit more immediate than they were getting it. And also, you know, we're not too bothered by trying to filter the information for you. So we're not trying to sugarcoat it and fix that pretty and nice. You know, we just give it to you the cold hard truth. We just give it to you just like that. Um, by the way, I don't have out my cool hard truth little, um, what we call in the industry overlay this morning because I took it down yesterday for, um, for the press conference. But let me get, let me show you guys how incredibly easy this is, right? This is modern technology. Like you've got to love modern technology. So bam, there it is. Click of a couple buttons and it's right back there. Um, I love modern technology. Listen, in any other age, doing what we do right now with coronavirus, trying to keep our kids at home, um, continue their educational programs, all this stuff would have been so much more difficult if we didn't have the technology that we have. And I do want to talk about that in terms of the internet companies. So before I recap some of this other stuff that I want to go over from yesterday's press conference, let me just say that some of our internet companies are failing us miserably. Um, good morning from Canada. So Chris uh, Turner's tuned in and IG from Canada. Cayman VA, VA team, they are saying good morning as well. Thank you guys so much. And Flor de Cania, which is a, a drink, but the young lady's got that as her name. <laughs> She's tuned in as well. And Ashley Bay, 345. Um, so yeah, listen, we're all home. Some of us are working from home. Um, you know, we need the internet to work. Uh, you know, we need decent internet. And we are struggling with certain providers because they've always provided poor, crappy service and they continue to provide poor, crappy service. And um, Jerry, uh, DJ underscore 13 is saying good morning from the UK. Thank you so much. And Kat, good morning to you as well. So, um, so yeah, we um, have always struggled as what is supposed to be the richest country in the world. We still struggle with internet connectivity. We pay some of the most expensive rates in the world as well um, for internet. And we continue to receive, in my opinion, subpar, subpar in terms of quality of our internet and subpar in terms of the speeds and reliability of our internet. And this is really a disgrace, I think, on us as a country. Offreg needs to start finding these companies and really starts to, needs to start stepping up, you know, um, their regulatory role. Because right now I know of a company and I'm not going to call, well, you know what? Screw it. This is a cool hard truth. <laughs> We're not going to sugarcoat anything here. A lot of you have been having an issue with C3. Let me just be very, very frank. It's nothing new, but it continues to be an ongoing issue that I'm hearing complaints about. You guys are posting your comments on social media and you're very, very concerned. Um, you know, I've got a family who they're at home. They've got a son who is um, doing his schoolwork. The wife or girlfriend is at home, the, the father's at home, and all three of them, just three persons, cannot be online or on the computer at the exact same time. Say what? Like seriously? Ashley, all the way from Kim and Brack, thank you so much. Um, so I'm thinking, say what now? You can't go on your computer, three people, 
with a 50 meg plus connection. They can't even get a simple web page to load. So this is something that we need to address. You know, it's times like this that you recognize precisely how poor your home internet provider actually is. And it's unacceptable when we're paying the kind of prices that we're paying. Anyway, they're gonna be switching to another provider. That's one solution. But, you know, if everyone is on Logic or everyone is on Flow, then the question becomes, do these other companies have enough capacity to service all of the businesses and all of the home users? We've all got mobile devices. You know, we are a connected community and we need that connectivity. So I really hope that they start to step it up. They don't give you any discounts. They don't give you anything for free. Like I said, we're paying top dollar for internet. So it is what it is, but at least if we're gonna pay top dollar, how about we get top quality service as well instead of crappy service? Just a request. Something again, that once this kind of blows over a little bit, government needs to look over. Ashley says, love you. Aw, Ashley, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I love coming back too. Can't come right now, but you guys are awesome. Topaz says, I'm concerned of the people returning home. We should have a facility to quarantine them. Some may not uphold the law of self-quarantine. All right, so Topaz, let's talk about it. It was brought up yesterday. Um, let me just say good morning to everybody else. I'm Zita, Jesse, Lily Boo, Antoinette, Jason, morning, Demi, Rosa, Viola. Everybody's tuned this morning. Shanna, good morning to all of you. Patrice, good morning. So this is a real concern. And I have had people um, messaging me about this, actually suggesting uh, this is a little bit unusual, but actually suggesting that we effectively quarantine these people by force. Mm. So in other words, the suggestion was, listen, we know they're not gonna take it seriously because, you know, they're, t they're young, they're gonna be back home. They're probably thinking, oh, I'm on a, on a spring break type of a situation. Um, I'm gonna go out, have a good time with my friends, that sort of thing. And um, there's some real serious concerns about what that means for all of us. And this person said, listen, why can't we tag them? You know, like how we do our prisoners. So let us put, um, what are those, the, the ankle bracelet monitors on them? I thought, whoa, that's kind of crazy. You know, in the US, they're talking about, okay, people are being forced to stay home, self-quarantine. There are things to consider like civil liberties and all this kind of stuff. Um, those are some real concerns in a country like the US because, you know, they're focused on human rights. We don't focus on human rights so much. Um, however, having said that, there are, I think, there's a balance to be struck between, you know, we can't imprison people to quarantine them. However, we also have to recognize that maybe people are not going to be as responsible as they need to be. And I think the government started to listen to some of these concerns and they finally recognize that yes, this is a very, very real and serious concern. So they have set up some potential options and solutions. Because remember, the other thing now is our people, once, especially students that are coming in, so we have something like 500 students that are coming in from the, um, the UK, right? That doesn't probably include other places. Those students pose a real risk. I know people in Florida, Nova, Southeastern University, big up to Nova, that's where I got my master's degree from. They actually have um, several 
outbreaks on campus of coronavirus and they're trying to now contain it. So they've kind of asked students to quarantine themselves like on campus, no instructors are going in the classrooms and that sort of thing. But those students are coming back to us. And when they come back, the protocol is every single person in contact with them, every single person in their homes are supposed to quarantine themselves as well. Because cross-contamination means when your kids come into your house, that entire household, that entire zone has the potential of being cross-contaminated. You're in close contact in a house with your kids. You know, you're all sharing the same kitchen. You're potentially sharing one or two bathrooms. So unless you have a massive house that is like 10,000 square feet, 8,000 square feet or 6,000 square feet. And you can say to your kids, okay, you stay over in that wing of the house and I'm going to stay over here. You have your own kitchen. You have your own services on that side. There's no need for you to come in contact with the rest of the family. There is a potential that you wouldn't have a real concern for cross-contamination. But let's face it. You're coming back. Your mom or dad or sister, somebody's picking you up at the airport. You're hugging and kissing them because you've missed them. Uh, you've already started the contamination process, right? You jump in the car, you're touching the doorknob, you are um, going home, you open the door, you flip on some lights, you're starving for some Cayman food. So your mommy just made a pot of rundown. You're like, yeah, boy, let me get that. I wasn't getting that in the UK. So of course, you then run to... Um, the kitchen pot, you open the pot, you're touching all sorts of surfaces. Now we know as well, something new that we've learned this week is that depending on the actual environment and different factors, the humidity and so on, coronavirus can actually survive in the air. So you don't even need to touch a surface to contaminate others and to infect other people. So that being a real consideration. The government is like, you know what? This, this is our potential. We have had a patient here who has been infected, but this now becomes a potential other source of carriers and out potential outbreak. So we need to try to handle this situation correctly and we need to try to contain our students as much as possible. We also know that students being young, younger, um, sometimes will think, oh, I can come home and hang out with my friends. Like, what else have I got to do? This is a spring break. I can party. I can have a good time, blah, blah, blah. That's also a real concern. So the government has said, listen, the other thing is it may be entirely possible for your um, family members to not all be able to self-quarantine. So say, for example, your mom still has to go to work. Like maybe she works for the police or a government agency that is still very much up and running and she can't stay home. If you've contaminated her and then she has to go out there and get to work, that's another potential issue. So the government is trying to come up with solutions. One... Um, of the possible solutions is to utilize hotels. So apparently several hotels have come forward and they have volunteered their facility because obviously their facilities closed in any event. And they have essentially said, listen, we are willing to allow these students to come back, stay at our facility so that it is then easier for them to self-contain themselves, self-quarantine themselves, not necessarily expose or impact the rest of their families, especially if the family member has vulnerable people. So, you know, a lot of Caymanians, we live in multi-generational homes, which means that, you know, we've got a grandmother living with us, an elderly aunt living with us, and all of those persons, potentially could be at risk because of their age and because of underlying issues. Maybe they're diabetic. Maybe they have, you know, heart conditions. 
They might have um, certain immune deficiencies. And just because of their age, they're also at greater risk than the rest of the population. So in some cases, it may not be feasible for an individual returning student to go back into their home environment for that 14 day quarantining period and expect the remainder of the family to also quarantine the entire household. So some of these hotels have stepped up. The premier said in yesterday's press briefing that three of them have stepped up to the plate. And um, what that means is they're exploring the options of how exactly this would work. So they will um, have to pay the cost, and this is a government cost, of um, allowing this to happen because, I mean, the hotels are, they're doing it at cost. So yes, it's kind of free, but they still have expenses. So if they open up their hotel and they, you know, they've got to pay CUC, they've got to pay water and all those sorts of things. So they're not in a position to carry those costs, but outside of the cost of doing it, they're not going to be making a profit in other words. Um, so this is a possibility. So I think we will hear more about this in the coming days because we know by this weekend, um, everybody is supposed to be back. By Saturday, midnight on Sunday, everything is kind of shutting down and it's going to be, you know, what it is once they shut it down, right? So he's looking at this, the premier is looking at this as an option. And um, I think probably today's press, press briefing, we will have a little bit more information about what hotels, he didn't say exactly what hotels it would be. But the idea is to have the returning students have absolutely no contact with their families at all. And I know this is hard, but this is a necessity. So no physical contact with their families. They would basically bus them from the airport directly to the hotel. Um, Younger children who may be away at boarding school, because let's not forget them. We've got boarding school kids who are like teenagers. So they might be 12, 13, 14 years old. We're not going to put them in a hotel with university kids, because obviously that would be highly inappropriate for numerous reasons. But we also need to consider some options for them. So they are looking at um, some alternative accommodations for at least the older adults. And then these younger children, I think that realistically the parents are going to have to prepare to self-contain the entire, self-quarantine the entire household. So here's the thing. If you have a child in boarding school that is coming back, they're supposed to self-quarantine for 14 days. Folks, do not take this lightly. Do not take this as a joke. This is a very serious matter. Make arrangements in advance of their return. If you need to go grocery shopping to make sure that you can stock up for that two week period of time, then you need to do so. Make sure that you can stay home and have home cooked meals for your kids and your family. If you have alternatives, so if you have other children in your household or you have you know, an elderly parent who traditionally stays with you and they are at high risk and you've got returning students, if you have a plan B for the other people in your household, the simplest thing may be to remove those persons from the household and then give it to like the one returning person. The only concern I have about that is thinking about how cross-contamination works. We have to keep in mind that at the end of the day, not every single person who comes in contact with the coronavirus will actually get sick. A large portion of persons will remain asymptomatic. So if you remain asymptomatic, that does not mean that you, um, sorry, I've got some little thing in my eye. I can feel it. It does not mean that 
you cannot spread it to other people um, or that you're not a carrier. So you could be asymptomatic in your household, touching surfaces, whatever, still have the virus, and then infect other people in your household who then become sick as a result. So this is the thing. It's like even that 14-day quarantining period, that is only for like the worst case scenarios, like people who are going to get it and who are going to get sick. But remember, there are other people who will have it and never show any symptoms. They never get sick and still they can infect other people. So quarantining, self-quarantining is going to help a lot, but it's not going to prevent this entirely simply because of that fact that there are people, again, who will have this and um, not know that they have it and still be infectious and still be spreading the virus to other people. So that's what we need to keep in mind. Um, so the premier also said that some essential workers, again, this could be HSA staff, um, you know, police, um, CBC, Customs Border Control, those persons may decide that they want to self-isolate themselves because, again, they're out and about in the community and um, potentially, you know, coming in contact with very high risk people, like if they work at the airport, for example, and they may not want to continue to be in their home environments exposing their families. So they will actually have the option to utilize uh, these hotel facilities if they decide to go in that direction as well. Other things that were announced yesterday include a stipend to all Caymanian bus and taxi operators of $600 for the month that the airport is going to be closed. So he's going to, his um, contacts will be reaching out to you from what I understand of all of the licensed operators. They don't actually have to do anything um, in order to get the stipend. Teachers, government teachers will continue to get paid. There is this question about private schools, private schools and private daycares, um, services, preschools and so on, continuing to charge parents despite the fact that there is no school. And I actually received um, a letter yesterday from a particular school. We're gonna be putting that story up a little bit later on this morning about um, such a school that has sent out a notice that they will be charging <clears throat> despite the fact that kids are not in school. Now, a lot of, um, a lot of parents feel a way about that, obviously. I mean, money is hard to come by at any time, much less now, um, when, you know, we're all taking a hit. So we're, I think we need to have that discussion, kind of explore, is it right? Is it fair to be charging for service that you're not even providing? At the same time, you think, well, how are they going to pay the teachers? And should that be, as parents, should that be our concern? You know, it's a community question, to be honest. So we'll put up the story and we can have that discussion probably maybe um, for this evening's program because we will be going live at a regularly scheduled time at 7 o'clock this evening as well. So that's one of the things that has been going on. Um... So, so far in terms of test results, 20 tests have come back negative, but we're waiting confirmation. So they're like preliminary results. We are waiting confirmation from the Caribbean Public Health Agency. And there are 44 cases that have been tested and waiting review. So just to remember that as of Sunday at 11.59 p.m., bars, gyms, restaurants, salons, you all now have to close. For three weeks. 
Uh, the airport, sorry, will be closed for three weeks. So no one is going to be in and out of the country except for emergency situations, which would be like air ambulance and that sort of thing. Um, cargo flights will continue to operate and work without interruption at this particular time. So hopefully we should have no interruptions with our grocery services um, or, or basic you know, food supply chains. So a lot of restaurants are planning to go the route of, um, of providing delivery service. So they're gonna stay open for cooking purposes. They just will not be open to the public. So that is certainly um, something to keep in mind. So I've been getting a lot of questions. I wanna go through some of those now. Uh, one person messaged this morning and said they're on a work permit, which expires next month. And their employers wanted to renew their work permit. Would that be okay for them to put it in? So technically there's nothing in the law that says you can't do that. Um, and the only question I had for that individual is, does your employer have work for you? If they have work for you and they're going to pay you, then yeah, they can, they can renew your work permit. And the person said, yes, they have, they have work for them. So that being the case, um, I don't think that you should have any concerns as long as you know that you're going to be working because legally you have to be working in the Cayman Islands to be here if you're on a work permit. Like you should be working and you should be getting paid. Not necessarily like I'm forcing you to go to work, but you shouldn't be stranded here with no income and no salary and that sort of thing, even in an emergency situation like this. So yesterday I had someone call me, their Royal Palms worker. As you guys know from what I said a couple days ago, Royal Palms has let some people go. Um, it's kind of weird how they're doing it because they're letting people go and then they're saying, well, you know, things, when things restart, you can come back into your job. So it's like, okay. Um, a lot of people know that Royal Palms is at least in part owned by Dart. I don't know if he has other partners or exactly how that works. But um, for some of his other companies, the hotels and stuff, they're paying staff for the month. And then I guess they reevaluate what the situation is. But they've made staff members who've worked there for quite some time redundant. And um, they have let them go. So at the end of the day, this person is saying, you know, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to leave? Am I supposed to stay? And the short answer to that is if you are a work permit holder and you have no work to do, so you have been fired, the legal position is your employer, it is their responsibility to cancel your work permit per, per the immigration law. And they're supposed to do that with immediate effect and advise immigration that you are no longer employed. Now, normally when that happens, you're able to get time and you could stay for maybe a couple weeks to wrap up your business and get your affairs in order. However, in this particular situation that we're facing right now, the chances of you being able to do that are very slim. Because we simply do not, as a country, have the capacity to keep people here in an emergency type of situation like this when they're not employed. We don't have any source of income. We can't support you should something go wrong. And unfortunately, that causes all sorts of potential issues. So I feel really bad for this person you know, they were a good worker. There's no issues with their work, but that's really not, unfortunately, in this situation, what this is about. So if you find yourself in that particular predicament, you should be making preparations 
to leave between now and when the airport closes um, over the weekend so that you do not get stuck here. Because getting stuck here um, means that you will have no available options in terms of surviving. And it's not a situation where it's just you and you just need to find a friend who can you know, let you stay with them or tide you over, whatever. Everybody is in the same boat right now. We're all going to be struggling in the coming months. And don't think that this is a situation like coronavirus is just going to disappear next month and we're all going to be kosher. We're all going to be good. The long-term implication of this is we could very well be looking at well into, um, we could very well be looking at well into the summer months June, July, August, before this is resolved. And that's a long time for a situation like this. So if I were those persons, I would say, you know, prepare yourself to go home so that at the very least you can be around family, um, you can be around uh, people who are able to assist you in the event that you need assistance. That seems to be um, the sensible thing to do. Yeah. Um, it's, it's the only advice I can give, Mike. You know, I have friends that are expat workers, very good friends. And of course, none of us want to see them leave. But at the same time, you know, we have to, number one, follow the law. Number two, we have to be honest about what the long-term prognosis is with this situation and kind of where we're at. And it's very unpredictable. And unfortunately, if already your employers have let you go, I think the reality of the situation is that you need to prepare for the fact that you may very well be gone for a number of months before things um, kind of settle down and go back to what's gonna be a new norm, I think, for the entire world. And, you know, everyone is concerned about their own personal situation, and I totally get that because as human beings, that's how we're wired, that's how we think. But this is like a worldwide situation. Like the, the airlines are gonna likely go bankrupt. No two ways about it. Bankruptcy worldwide for airlines means we're all in a lot of trouble. The other thing I wanna address is during times like this, there's gonna be a lot of people in need. And of course we have to step up to the plate and try to help each other whenever we can. And as such, you know, here at Cayman Mall Road, even before I had Cayman Mall Road, for those of you who know me, and some of you don't really know me, know me, you just know the persona of me, which is fine. But my friends who I've been friends with for a long time, because I, I don't change friends like I change clothing. <laughs> I keep my friends and the good ones stay around for a very long time. They know that I'm a very, despite the tough exterior, which I can be tough if needed, I'm actually a very soft person in some respects. So sometimes people kind of find that funny. Ooh, someone from Switzerland, hello, darling. Uh, thank you for joining in. So, you know, someone saw me the other day, my daughter, and they're like, there's someone in the legal profession. They're like, this is so weird. Like, I never thought of you as like being a mother and you're so loving and oh my gosh, this is like a totally different side of you. Well, they don't really know me. Like we've only been in each other's company a few times. So I thought it was kind of funny. And they're like, I, I hope you don't take this the wrong way or take this as an insult. And I'm like, why would I be insulted by that? You know, but we all have, um, we all have different sides of our personality. But people know that I'm like really soft when it comes to dogs, children, and the elderly. And if anybody comes to me and says any of those three things need help, 
I'm just like, oh my gosh, how can I help? What can I do? Da, 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 da. You know, um, I know Tasha's like, that's too funny. It is. It, I thought it was really amusing as well. She's like, oh, you're so soft hearted. Look at you with your daughter. I was like, oh God, they should see me with Coco before I had my daughter. Like I love my dog Coco. Anyway, um, and just as an aside, that made me think of something because my girlfriend, uh, Mary, big up to Pessy from West Bay. She always says to me like, oh, when you cook, you know, you're always inviting all these people over and you're feeding people and this costs money and time. And, you know, I enjoy cooking. It's something that I love to do. And I like to have friends over and whatever. Now, here's the irony of the situation. There's a certain person who now has me in court for harassment for criminal charges by the name of Matthew Leslie. And I'm not going to say a whole lot about, I can't really talk about the case. We're hoping that it's actually going to be moved forward. Um, because of the coronavirus, one of the positive things is um, a lot of court cases, like the judge and loan cases in particular, could be moved forward quicker. They could deal with them a lot quicker because now they're going to have a slower overall schedule, right, for like the jury stuff and whatever. So this is good news to me because I just want to get this over with. But what a lot of people don't know in terms of the relationship with Matthew is that I saw Matthew as like a little brother that I would try to give advice to. Wasn't really keen on taking my advice, but you know. And so Matthew obviously likes food. I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm a foodie too. I like food. And so when I would cook and I'd post my pictures on social media, Matthew would always be like, oh my gosh, your food looks so good. Um, can I get a plate? I'm really hungry. You know, those brownies look so awesome, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, well, I mean, what's food? You know, if I can't offer somebody a plate of food, if they ask for it, like, what's the big deal? Like, it really isn't all of that, you know? We weren't best friends. He's never been inside my house. He's never been inside my apartment. It wasn't that type of a relationship. But, you know, we would chat on WhatsApp and talk politics and whatever. So I said, you know what? Sure. So every, it became like a standing order, like every single Sunday, I could expect to get a, a message from Matthew Leslie. Oh man, what you cooking today? I'm so hungry. And I'd be like, all right, I'm doing lasagna. I'm doing mac and cheese. I'm doing, you know, curry chicken, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want a plate. And then it started to become, I want a plate. And my friend, my friend, i.e. I need another plate for later on, also wants a plate of food. So it was kind of funny, but you know, I'd, I'd fix him a to-go plate. I was like, no problem. I got you. Oh, can I have some extra brownies? Man, these brownies are the bomb. All right, not a problem. So um, yeah, you know, I used to do that. So after things, and like I said, I'm not gonna get into all this, but I'm hoping one of the benefits of going to court and one of the benefits of a trial is that, um, did I forget to show on the AC this morning? Is that a lot of this stuff flushes out in court and you get to hear the details and then it becomes a matter of public record. The media can report on it. The media can put it out there. There's no gag orders in place and whatever. So I think that that's a good thing in many respects. I'm hoping that um, that will set the record straight um, in a lot of different respects in terms of this whole situation. But anyway, let me move on from that. The point that I was trying to make um, yeah, it's a little warm in here. Sorry. Just adjusting my AC. Is that, you know, we're going to be all in a position now where we can try to um, help each other out as much as possible. So there will be things that you can do to be helpful to one another. And I want to encourage people to do that as much as possible. So it may be that an elderly person next door is going to need your help. And there's nothing wrong with stepping up and saying, you know what, I will, I will help you. I will cook. I will give you something to eat. You know, I will um, ensure that you're going to be good. Like you don't have to worry about the situation. Gigi says, I want to play also. <laughs> Krista, which by the way, Krista is the chef here. We're going to talk about Krista 
later on, she's coming on board to talk about um, how she has lost a ton of weight um, doing her own program. And now she's going to be offering that to the public. And Krista's awesome. And Krista does a lot of like my cooking. I'm not going to claim that it's healthy. A lot of it is like, listen, mac and cheese. That's got like five cheeses in it. Um, you know, my coconut rice with curry chicken, my bread rolls. I mean, it's, it's good, but I'm not necessarily saying that it's healthy all the time. Krista, on the other hand, knows a thing or two about healthy cooking. And she's going to be joining us. But she's jokingly saying that I'm lazy to cook, Sandy. So I'm putting in my breakfast order. <laughs> so um, someone says, is immigration still going to be open? Processing of work permits is still acceptable. So as we know it, as of right now, yes, immigration for now is open. They are, um, I forgot to turn the AC on this side of the house. I'm sorry, but it's like getting hot in here now. They are going to, like they have been all week, implementing um, certain things. So in other words, they will uh, not be letting people inside. They're gonna be letting people stay outside and kind of let you in once at a time, one at a time. And they're also encouraging people to fill out the bags. Like they're not gonna be touching your paperwork and all that kind of stuff. So you're gonna do bag drop, fill your bag out, put it in. And again, be conscious of the essential workers that we have. So don't be getting in their faces, um, you know, getting all close to them and breathing on them, whatever. Stay that three to six foot distance that we know is healthy. Unholy kid wants to get a shout out. Yes, you may get a shout out. Um, Kim Barden had a good little chuckle right there. Um, so Lady Den says, me too. I think she might have been talking about the food situation and being a softy. Oh, yeah. So let me get back to why I was actually sharing that story. There's a whole point. Yesterday, I got a couple requests from individuals for stuff. So, you know, I try to vet because anytime I ask for help, if we put something up, people tend to respond very well. You guys are awesome. They come forward. They're going to help put packages together, help people. And so people come to me as a source for, okay, I need help. My baby needs formula. We need diapers. We need this, we need that. And I try as much as I can to vet people who need help. Because, you know, there's some people in the community who are just always about handouts and they don't help themselves. And of course, if they have children, that's a bit of a catch-22 situation because sometimes they use the children, the fact that they have these kids, because we don't ever want children in our community to go hungry and without basic things like formula and diapers. And they will use the fact that they have children as a bit of a leverage tool to try to get the sympathy of the community. But like I told one young lady a couple of years ago, this was such a weird situation, right? She came to me for help. Most of these people, I have no clue who they are. And I don't need to know who you are to help you. To me, it doesn't really matter. But where I started to understand that it does matter a little bit to know a person's history is this lady came to me. She gave me this story about, you know, she's got these kids and they're in need and blah, blah, blah. And when I started asking for help for her, somebody was like, hold on. Based on the description, is this so-and-so? Is this this person? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, listen. This woman is running a scam on you. First of all, she does not even have custody of her children. The government had to take them away. DCI had to take them away and give them to her mother. And I was like, what the? Yeah. And then on top of that, despite the fact that she's unemployed, can't make ends meet, you know, begging for assistance, so on and so forth. She's got this no good Jamaican man that she's picked up who was just using her to stay in Cayman. And she could find funding to go out partying with him and having a good time with him and that sort of thing. I'm thinking, hmm, when you're in need, there's certain things that you yourself need to do to help yourself. And when people see you trying and people seeing you trying to help yourself, of course, we're all motivated to help you. But we didn't get where we are in life by making those types of poor decisions. You know, we didn't get where we are in life by trying to take care of a man when we can't even take care of our own children. 
That doesn't make any sense. Men come and men go. Children are your responsibility. When you bring them into this world, they become your sole responsibility. So I was kind of already feeling a little way about this situation. And you know me, the cold hard truth. So I had a conversation, I messaged her and I said, listen, I'm getting a lot of people unwilling to help because they know who you are and they know of your long history of not doing the right thing. Every time you get a job, you up and quit your job. Um, just, oops, IG, stop. Let me just restart the IG feed. They only give you like an hour and then they cut out. So, um, you know, I had this heart to heart with her. She's like, yeah, you know, some of that isn't true and I'm going to make better decisions and I'm trying to get my kids back. And, you know, whenever someone lies to you from the onset, like whenever someone comes to you with a lie, the first thing you go is, well, why the lie? Like, be straight up, be honest. There's no need for you to lie about your situation. But of course, people lie because they don't want to look like bad people. They don't want to look like people who've been making bad decisions their entire lives, although that is the truth. So we got her a job at a local grocery store. She promised that she was going to keep this job and she was going to do what she needed to do. And, you know, the first week on the job, she's like, oh, they love me. They're saying I'm supervisory material and all this good stuff. Got her donations you know, got some clothing and uniforms for the kids. All these things were done. And lo and behold, two months in, what does she do? Quits the job again. Because, you know, some people get $500. They think they're rich. And $500 is going to last forever. So she quit her job. And then here we go again, starting all over. But I said to her in that voice note at the time, I said, honey, in life, Sometimes you only get one chance. You have had multiple opportunities and multiple chances from what I've heard. This is your first time coming to me for help, and I'm going to help you. I'm not going to judge you based on what other people have said about you, but I also want you to know that I am aware of what people are saying and what they're telling me, and it's coming to me. So I don't want you to think that I don't know and that you're playing me because you're not playing me. Ultimately, you're going to be playing your damn self. So know that I'm aware and I will help you, but you need to help yourself. And if it's true that you have been making all of these poor decisions, you need to think a little bit clearer about your life and the direction that you want to go. Get it together. You're a mother of three, four kids. Get it together. Yes, Miss Sandra, I'm going to do that. Blah, blah, blah. Well, like I said, a couple months later, you know, here we go, starting all over again. But she knows not to come back to me because, listen, I may have a soft heart, but when I say, yo, this is how it's going to go, you get one chance. You screw me over in the one chance, I'm done with you. You need to take me seriously because the chances of you getting a second chance are slim to none. It's a little bit of tough love, but it is what it is. The funny thing is, this no good man that she picked up who was using her for immigration purposes, what does she do? She turns around and marries him. So now we've imported another no good man into our community. Boy, like I said, sometimes we can make some stupid decisions as women in particular. It's like sometimes we get so desperate for a man, and I'm like, why? When you think about the number of men that are out there, I know it's it's hard to find a good man, but geez, um, the ones we're picking up are not even good men. That's the problem. Anyway, that could be a whole other discussion. So I've had a few people that have come forward yesterday that needed help. One mother needed formula for her child. I sent that out in my WhatsApp news group, which by the way, you guys can join, just message me, 324-1612. The response was awesome. Like I said, we've got some good people in this community. I don't have any qualms about saying that. And one person in particular, her and her husband went and bought six cases of formula to take to this mother. 
when people are really in need, a lot of us as Caymanians have a lot of pride and we don't always want to ask for help. So I'm also aware that when people come and ask me for help, they don't want their business out there in terms of their name and personal details. And I always try to protect that information as much as I possibly can. In this particular case, because I am not in a position to collect the goods myself and take to her, because again, we're all trying to self quarantine. Um, I had to send the donors directly to her and I gave them her contact number and said, please, you know, drop off the donations directly to her. And that's just, that's just the times that we live in right now. So if you come to me for help, I will do my best to help you, but I can't personally come and make the delivery. And then we had another mother who had been working and I know this woman quite well. She was laid, laid off of her job two weeks ago because she's with um, a travel agency that unfortunately they saw what's happening now with the shutting down of all the airlines coming. And they knew that the turn downturn in business would mean they'd have to let people go. And unfortunately she was the first person to be let go. Just she was let go. And then her husband who works for an events company was also let go on Monday because they're like, listen, everybody's canceling everything. Like we're not going to have any business. So it's, it's going to be a tough time. You know, now you have a household of multiple children with two parents that have both been let go because of the coronavirus situation. And so that family will have to go to NAU. There's no other way about it. And, you know, NAU is going to have to help them. That's government. And listen, there are no free rides in this world. So I had someone else saying to me yesterday, so CUC has said that they will give you, let me just mention this quickly. CUC will give you um, a waiver of up to three months, up to $300 per month for a total of $900. The banks, big up to Cayman National Bank, big up to Butterfield Bank, they have all publicly shared that now they will be doing three months of waived payments if you qualify. Where's my gavel? I need my gavel because I want to slam that gavel down on credit union. A member's own bank, credit union is not owned by the Cayman Islands government. They are a credit union, so it's a member's bank. But they have, in my opinion, been failing people in this country for a long time, and that doesn't seem to have changed. So they, government employees got paid early on yesterday. They took out loan payments right away. Now, for them to have made that decision, clearly they were not planning and offering anyone any sort of payment holiday. So to me, that's wrong. And then in addition to that, if you want to afterwards, after we posted something about it, they're trying to recover their reputation. Uh, they come back and say, well, yes, 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 we will do something. It's a case by case basis. We'll consider it, blah, blah, blah. Um, but you need to apply and there's an application fee of $40. <laughs> I mean, honestly, an application fee of $40 to get considered for payment holiday. And you're going to pay the application fee whether you get approved or not. What, what's credit union doing? Like, seriously. Every member in that bank should consider going to another bank. The benefits that you get, trust me, in times like this, you really get to understand that Sometimes your best bet is actually a commercial bank. So that was disappointing to hear. And then I do have some messages that I want to read about that. The other thing I want to say is, listen, I bank with, um, well, I actually bank with a few places, but my primary bank is Cayman National Bank. And they have been my primary bank for a very long time. And I must say that CNB steps up to the plate in more ways than one. So not only are they offering this payment holiday for up to three months on your mortgage, for qualified persons. And what that qualified means is if 
you are in arrears on your mortgage already. Unfortunately, you will not qualify because you're not in good standing with the bank. And that's that makes sense. That's common sense. They don't want to, on top of you being in arrears, turn around and um, make your position even worse. Because I want to explain to you how these payment holidays work. And you need to be fully cognizant of how they work before making the decision to take them up. Because unless I give you a plate of food, there's no such thing in life as a free meal. Trust me when I tell you. There are conditions and terms that come with these types of situations. So someone sent me a message. Oh gosh, I've got so many messages that I need to go through about um, credit union. Let me just see if I can find it. Um, so they were saying that basically they were trying to even get an appointment with them. And that was proving to be difficult because they're like, oh, yeah, you know, now we'll consider doing something with you. But you guys need to give us a call and blah, blah, blah. And you're trying to call them. They've got bare bone staff and you can't get an appointment with everyone. Everyone claims that they're too busy. So they're saying that they'll consider waiving payments for April, which is a whole month from now, but not this month. So CNB, I don't know the details of Butterfield's offer, but I know for a fact because I do have my mortgage with CNB and I do bank with CNB, their payment holiday starts right now, this month. So it's not a situation where they've already taken out your money and they're going to be like, oh, well, you know, next month we'll, we'll, we'll deal with you. So they're, they're offering up to three months. But you have to accept that offer because there are certain conditions that go with that. So for example, one of the conditions is the fact that you have to pay that money back. There is no such thing as a free meal, folks. The bank has loaned you X amount at X interest rate and whatever. They've pre-calculated what you're going to pay back in total, what their money is, whatever. So if you're taking a payment holiday, you are simply delaying paying those three months. It will add on to the tail end of your mortgage. And in some instances, you're going to actually be paying a little bit more, depending on how your mortgage is structured and the length of your mortgage and where you're at in your mortgage payments and whatever. So you may end up paying a little bit more on the tail end because you've basically skipped three months worth of payments. And that includes for three months, you're not paying any interest. You're not paying the premium, nothing. Three months, you're getting to not, you know. So they're trying to help people, but I want to make sure that people who accept the offer, they should fully understand the conditions upon which you're accepting this offer. Because you guys know how this works. People are going to come back next year, the year, oh, I'm about to lose my house because I took this payment holiday and nobody explained to me how this works. And I didn't know this and I didn't know that. Listen, it is your responsibility as the consumer to make sure you understand the agreements that you're entering into. Just like when you accept that mortgage, oh, I'm so happy to get a house. Great. You got the house. You sign on the dotted line, but did you read the details? Did you read all of the information contained in your mortgage document? If you didn't, you put yourself at risk. So this person says, um, trust you and your family are doing well. Pray God will continue to cover you. Read Credit Union. Sadly, this seems to be like the best that they can do for our members. And then they sent a link where finally they put something up. Um, loan waivers, one to three months approved starting April. Then the person goes on to say, not sure how they can figure granting on a case by case basis is working with their members when you have to make applications to see the officers, appointments, sorry, to see the officers. And most times they are already booked out. Even when, um, 
even went, hold on, when even to the businessman with loans up to $2 million at BOB can receive assistance. They should even give two automatic payments, being that they gave one in November, or give the members a chance of getting November early. So I think what they're saying, um, and then they say they have absolutely no excuse. I think what they're saying is in November, some banks do it like November, December, going into Christmas. They basically give you an automatic kind of payment holiday for the holidays. But again, the danger of you taking advantage of that is you only get the one. You don't get more than one. So once you accept it for the next 12 months, there is no other payment holidays. Well, these are extraordinary, extraordinary times. So this person's opinion is the credit union really needs to do a bit better than this. And um, perhaps, you know, they could really just step it up a little bit. I agree. If they need to pull in more loan officers, get rid of the application fee, make the process that much more, you know, listen, you know what CNB did? They sent an email because, you know, things need to be in writing. They said, this is what we can offer you. Um, we're offering our clients the three months. We need confirmation from you that you're going to accept it because not everyone will accept this. Like I said, you're going to end up paying for it on the tail end and you probably will end up paying more for your mortgage. So there are people who are in a position where they will continue working, they will have no issues and they're gonna to continue to pay their bills uninterrupted. And if you are in that position, the best advice that I can give you is to do that. Don't see this as, oh yeah, I'm gonna get out of three months of not paying my mortgage. You're actually not. Eventually you gotta pay it and you will eventually end up paying more. So um, this person went on to say, wanted to privately share that there was a student who returned from the UK on a flight last week who was not self-quarantined in a house with an entire family. And of course, some of those work amongst other people. And their colleagues don't even know about this. So this is where now you have to be very, very cautious, like I was saying earlier, about this whole self-quarantining thing. So CMB was busy emailing people yesterday. I got a personal email from my loan officers, and they actually picked up the phone and called as well. As I mentioned to you guys um, yesterday, we did have a death in the family, and you know they even called to extend their condolences. You know, the bank is in the banking business. But it's good to have that little bit of a feel, a personal feel, to when they deal with you. We're all human beings at some level. Um, the other thing I want to say about CNB, I'm bigging them up because they actually thought about their staff as well. And here's the thing. Their staff are 90% Caymanian. So when they help their staff, they're helping Caymanian families by extension. On Friday of last week, the second on Thursday, we had the confirmation that we've got our first virus. Friday, they're like, okay, we're going to start putting some measures and stuff in place. This is what we're going to do. Um, CNB gave every single staff member $1,000 directly to their account. It's not a loan. It is a gift of $1,000. Go deal with your business. Buy your groceries, buy your supplies, set that aside, whatever you, you got to do. So I want to give a big, big shout out to um, CNB for doing that. And in addition to that, on Monday, once the feds over the weekend dropped the interest rates to like zero and whatever, with immediate effect, they dropped the interest rates on staff loans down to like 3%, which is awesome. And again, that's helping. Um, CNB has hundreds of people employed. They are the largest bank on the island. They have the most, the biggest, you know, ATMs. They're the only bank in Cayman Brack. You know, I think they have an ATM in Little Cayman as well. I'm not 100% sure, but I know they obviously have the one in Cayman Brack. 
um, more locations, like five locations here on this island of retail banking locations, multiple ATMs. So they're the biggest bank on the island. They also, like I said, employ the most Caymanians. And at the end of the day, they have just dropped interest rates immediately for staff members. I noticed that when interest rates drop, there's some banks who will, and I've seen this across the board, Scotia, FCIB, whatever, interest rates drop this week, they'll be like, okay, starting April or the month after, you, the consumer, will get the benefit of that drop. CNB does it, bam, this month, starting next week. You know, they're really on the ball with certain things that I feel is beneficial to the consumer. Obviously, they're still in the business of making money. That's what they're in. They're, they're in the banking business. So Alric says, congrats to CNB on recent actions. Um, you know, CNB was acquired last year by the Trinidadian Bank, but not much has changed so far. And I hope it remains this way in terms of how they have been treating their staff, their employees, and by extension, their customers. So hopefully that will continue because they were our last local bank and there was a lot to be said for that. All right, folks, I think um, I, I've got a lot of messages I know that I have to go through. There are concerns about people at the airports, even coming in now who are not properly um, taking precautions and not keeping their distance. Someone said to me yesterday, they went to the grocery store, they went to Foster's airport and they were shocked that the security guard was up on them and they were like, listen, step back. We're supposed to be social distancing. You need to please step back. They thought when they looked around that people didn't get the whole social distancing concept. And um, that's not cool. You need to stay away from people. Even when you're in the grocery store, you hail them up from a distance, you say hi, you wave and you keep moving. Um, so please remember the importance of social distancing. Now, I was surprised to hear that the staff, they said, you know, they were a little bit concerned about the staff, like not wearing gloves and stuff, which I'm not big on the whole gloves thing because um, we've actually seen evidence that's probably not as helpful as you think and could be more detrimental. Um, but when I went to Countryside yesterday, they were spraying down everything. Like the second you leave before the next customer comes, that cashier was disinfecting the way station, the where you were handling like bagging your groceries, all of that. So she had on gloves and she was doing all of that. Staff are now serving. There's no longer self-serve food at, at Foster's. They're serving you. They serve your soup, your porridges in the morning. Um, the food, the hot food bar is now covered with plastic, maybe eventually they'll get the, the glass containers and put up there. Um, there is no salad bar. So they're pre-making like um, some of the fruit trays and stuff like that. So if you need to do a grab and go, you can just pick that up and go. But they don't want people like all touching the same utensil handles, which is important, and all that sort of thing. It's better if one staff member behind the counter does it than a thousand people walking through the door for breakfast. Um, so kudos and hats off to CNB. I mean, sorry, CNB, yes, but Foster's for implementing some of those measures. And I think, to be honest, for a very long time, a lot of people um, have wanted those measures in terms of removing self-serve. And, you know, sometimes there's a lot of good that comes out of these types of situations. So bear with me, folks. I see your messages coming in. I will try to get through a lot of those messages today. As you guys know, I do have, and thank you so much to Lady Dents for your condolences. I appreciate that. And everyone else who has been sending their condolences through. Um, Lisa says that A.L. Thompson's is the same thing in terms of the people. There should be a 10 person limit in stores. And they may have to seriously consider that if people are just walking around, not even cognizant of the fact that they are in such close quarters. Um, Although as of Sunday, I guess Ale Thompson's would be shutting down as well, right? So um, we'll pick back up the conversation this evening. I don't want to keep you guys too long into your day. Uh, we still are trying to arrange a time to have an interview with Woody Foster. In, times, in terms of other stuff that's been going on, there is the um, 
there was a stabbing yesterday of a woman who stabbed a man. Thankfully, that was not a fatal situation. Um, I've been provided some details on that, but I haven't had a chance yet to um, really vet the information in terms of what happened. But it seems like it's they weren't in a relationship, but it's some kind of domestic kind of thing. So he may have been seeing her at some point, And I guess she's pissed off, obviously, about something. So, folks, keep just hold it down. Tensions are high, but there's no need to act crazy. There's no need to go around stabbing people. This is a time to show love, not fight and beat people up and, you know, try to harm people in any way. We don't have time to deal with all that additional stress. So just keep it, keep it cool. Um, as you guys know, I have businesses of my own. Thankfully, um, my businesses have always allowed me flexibility. Like I don't have to be stationed at any particular location. So um, I've got computer accesses at different locations. So that's helpful for me. And um, I want people to continue to support the companies that make this show possible and that make our efforts possible here at Cayman Mall Road. So big up to Popeyes, big up to Burger King, um, those are sort of our two major sponsors that have been on for about six months now, and we really appreciate it. They actually give out gift certificates as well, which I do have. I need to locate those gift certificates. I do have some gift certificates. I tell you what, I will give out a couple of gift certificates this evening. So please tune in to the show to be eligible for gift certificates. A lot of you guys have been asking for um, merchandise. And we are looking at a couple merchandise options. You guys know I got my CMR mugs, which we've had for a little while. I'm looking at potentially some CMR shirts and some CMR phone cases. Since, you know, you're normally on your phone checking CMR news. So we're hoping to have some of that merchandise available soon. Um, and, you know, yeah, as a, as a business owner, you know, we all have to keep it, keep it down. I've got, I've actually got work to do. Like I say, the work that pays the bills I've got to do today as well. Um, so thank you guys so much for tuning in. Emily says, I love Cayman. Um, I know they will try to keep Cayman safe. Um, Gigi says, nice job. Have a good day. Uh, Jackie Stanley says, good job. I really like you. Oh, thanks, Jackie. And I'm sorry for your loss. Rest in peace. Thank you guys so much. Okay, folks, two o'clock-ish because yesterday it was three o'clock. And I think it just depends on if the panel members have meetings and other stuff going on. Um, the time varies a little bit. So be patient about the start time. Um, Max says that he's in quarantine for 12 more days. You know what? Maybe we should do a show, Max, about people like yourself who are in quarantine. We'll talk about that this evening. So tune in for this evening's program and we'll chat with you and a few other people and find out what your quarantine journey has been like. Like, what have you been doing since you've been quarantined? We want to know. Um, although most of us are kind of semi-quarantined anyway, because we're all kind of staying home. But yeah, we can talk about that. Um, I know a lot of the Instagram kids, some of the high school kids love jumping in on the Instagram chat. So we do give them the... Um, opportunity to do that as well. Krista says, um, have a good day, Sandy. I was trying to call hubby to give some love for loss. Love you guys. Thank you so much, Krista. Um, as you can understand, it's a difficult time, particularly for him, because it was his dad, my husband's father that actually passed away. So he's been kind of just, you know, trying to process that. Um, and it's like the worst time too, because, you know, we can't travel right now. And so, um, we're going to have to be waiting to do all of the family stuff that has to be done, the burial and stuff like that. Um, Sharon says, condolences to you and your family. Continue doing a great job. Patty, people who still receiving their salary should be paying their monthly bills as usual. Please do not take advantage of the situation as we're all in this together. Psalms 5110, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And Patty, again... Great advice. If you don't need the help, taking advantage of it really doesn't help you in the long term, to be honest, anyway. Um, and, you know, again, even people who message me, message me if you're really in need, because, you know, it's going to be some tough times ahead. And people who are stepping up to the plate and assisting you don't necessarily assume 
that they always have it. Sometimes we assist other people at our own um, disadvantage, our own detriment, because we know that there are people out there who need it more than we do. You know, so if you have a little bit, you want to give a little bit, but just because you're giving to someone doesn't mean that you have a lot. And I think we all need to be cognizant of that. And we all need to remember, don't take advantage of anyone, but especially in times like this, because everybody's in need. So I think I'll end the show on that note. Again, thank you guys so much for tuning in this morning. We've been doing the morning um, segment. You guys can give me your feedback, the morning edition of The Cold Hard Truth. Um, I get up a little bit earlier to be able to, to do that and not have on my shower cap, by the way, if you guys have not noticed. Um, so yeah, so I get up a little bit earlier in the mornings to be able to do that. And we'll do it kind of for as long as we can to keep you guys informed because these are very dynamic times that we're living in. And a lot is changing and lots happening like kind of by the minute. Of course, stay tuned to our social media networks, Facebook and Instagram, because we update things as quickly as we can get it on those platforms as well. And um, we will have the show this evening. And like I said, we're still trying to get Woody on. So Woody Foster, chamber president and owner of Foster's Supermarket. So we'll see when we can um, arrange to have him on air to speak to you guys. And we'll have a couple other guests and stuff coming on to the program as well. So um, I know that Star 92.7 sent out a notice yesterday. A lot of you guys enjoy listening to their platform. Um, but they, um, they um, will not be in studio again, trying to contain the situation. So they will be streaming remotely. Everything's online. So you can still listen to the music and whatever. You just won't get the live show. So there will be no JJ in the morning. There will be no um, Renegade in the morning. And by extension, there'll be no uh, evening talk show with Ruth Anna, I'm assuming as well. Um, so Ervalyn says, I love the morning edition, but miss the evening one. So we only miss the evening one on Tuesday because unfortunately... Tuesday morning was when we got the bad news um, about the death in the family. So we should be good for tonight. All right, folks. Love it. Love it. Love it. Please be safe. It is Thursday, March 19th. I wish you a wonderful, wonderful day. Be positive. You can't hug people, but you can still say hi. You can throw them a kiss from a distance and wave at them. Give them good wishes. Send them a WhatsApp message. Um, still be kind to one another and I will see you guys this evening at seven o'clock. Have a good day. You don't, you don't know, know who I, who I but I know, I know. I've seen you do I've come to set the record straight I've come to shine the light on you Let me introduce myself